in all sincerity, I still believed that everything I see in my vision is already with me, right? I already have what I need. I'm already, I just, my job is to trust and keep walking towards it. That is writing that down though. It starts with the vision. It starts with what do I, if I could do anything in the world, what brings me joy? Close your eyes and say, what brings me joy? What do I love doing? What do I, because that is linked to your purpose, right? For me, I'm such a people person, as you know. And for me, when I started this whole process of creating this vision that this company was going to be a platform for me to build, I asked myself that question. I said, what what do I want to do if I could do anything? And it, it the answer was so clear. And it will come to you guys if you get quiet with yourself. It will come to you. And it was, I want to impact women to know that they are limitless. Like those words really popped in my head. I want to impact women to know that they are limitless. How I was going to do that, I have no idea. I literally was just asked to sell some awesome skincare and makeup. Welcome to The Ownership Game with Gary Montalbo. What would it take to get into the driver's seat of your life and leave your mark? The Ownership Game starts now. My guest today is absolutely remarkable. Some of us are lucky enough to have that one ride or die friend. The one who will always be the first to cheer you on, no matter how crazy that idea is. The one who will never give up on you. The one that sees your true potential and knows you are capable of anything that you set your mind to. And what's more, they have this uncanny ability to transmit that love, passion, and belief in such a way that by the time they're done, you can't help but believe that about yourself. That's what Mary Kay Kemper has been doing for tens of thousands of women for the last eight years. In this interview, she gets really vulnerable about the fears and insecurities she felt when she began her transition from her comfortable high-paying job on Wall Street to becoming an entrepreneur. Since taking that leap, she has built a multi-million dollar skincare and cosmetics business as a consultant with Limelife by Alcone. I wanted to have Mary Kay on the show because I think that she has a very special gift. In my experience, one of the things that we often struggle with is believing in something when there is no evidence for it. How can I believe that I can accomplish something when the odds are against me, when I have no experience, when I don't have the money, the education, etc.? It can be a struggle and it often defies our experience of reality. If this is something that you can identify with, then buckle up because Mary Kay is about to give us a masterclass in creating, embodying, and living into your vision. So there's two things I want to talk to you about. I I think you just, I'm curious about your transition and what that was like, because I feel that a lot of entrepreneurs or, or even career people, they want to make that move. They want to make a shift in some way, shape, or form. But it's hard when you have consistency and getting paid mm-hmm. a certain way. For me, it was like my I, had, I was a designer. And I put a lot of work into being a really good designer. I had this portfolio. I went to a top art school and I had a pedigree. And I, I did really well. And then all of a sudden, giving that up to make a transition into my coaching Like Mm -hmm. it took me years personally. Like what was that like for you? Okay, this is a doozy. So I don't even know if you know this part of my story, but when we first, you know, started the company that I'm with, I was offered, you know, to to work with them. And I was the one that said, well, I want a corporate position Uh because to me, that was safe. Yeah, that was safe. I was like, oh yes, I love your idea. I love your vision. I love your mission. Put me on the corporate side. And it was our co-founder who was like, no, that's not where you belong. You belong as an independent. You belong Uh as somebody that's going to build an organization. You belong on the, the sales field side, which is the entrepreneurial side and building your own business. And I was like, no. I mean, I really was like, you're wrong. You're wrong. I don't have those skills. I don't. 
I don't know what that means. I'm not a leader. I don't even know how to lead myself when mm-hmm. we started this, right? So, so I was filled with all the fear, all the worry, all the, I mean, you name it, judgment, everything, everything. I had such imposter syndrome because, and, and the, the answer is I created a vision because I needed to sit down with myself. First and foremost, the co-founders of the company saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a huge piece to anybody who's thinking of starting their own business. You, you've got to seek out those people that see it, that believe it, that believe in you maybe a little bit more than you believe in yourself in that moment, because that is going to be essential for you to sort of like ride on that coattail. Because Get out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really like just allow them to, to do that for you and, and believe them believe them. That's a huge piece of that. If somebody is saying that to you, don't take away from them the honor of seeing that light in you. Right. And I wanted to take that away. I was like, I don't know who they've got the wrong girl. They got the wrong girl. Right. But something really allowed me to first and foremost, believe in their belief in me and, and trust them. And then secondly, create a vision of, okay, what is this going to look like? Because I also knew that whatever I was about to embark on was not going to happen overnight. It was going to be, I was going to have to trust a process that I was going to have to have a faith that I'd never tapped into before. But I really, I, I wanted more in my life at this point. And what I was doing was not working for me. So there was a realization of that, that this just is no longer working for me. And when something is no longer working for you, you have two choices. (laughs) You either, you either stick around just because you think that that's the box that you belong in, or you get yourself out of that box and you go and figure out what else is out there. So I knew what I was doing was not working for me. And I had this opportunity that I really believed in the mission and the vision. I, I didn't think I could do what was being asked of me, but I, I kind of felt like, well, I'm just going to go on this journey. And I didn't know how, but I allowed. So I just kind of went on it with this incredible blind faith that sometimes I don't even know where it came from, Gary. I, I really don't. It, it's something that was bigger than me at the time was mm-hmm. really driving me towards this. And I also think that's huge for people to just recognize in themselves when you're on a path and you're in alignment with what your soul's meant to do, there are signs Mm. you, you get them if you're, if you're willing to see them and feel them. Mm -hmm. And I saw them. And so I just kind of made that transition in a way of, I'm probably going to struggle for a while. Mm. I'm probably going to be broke (laughs) for a while. And maybe that dream vacation and that new wardrobe I might want is is not going to happen, but I'm going to really, I'm just going to go all in. And I, I literally just felt this, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And it's scary financially. It's scary in all the ways. Um, but I just felt this very strong sense of peace that what I had going on was not working in all the ways. Mm Because when your professional life is not working, most likely your personal life is not working either. They're always aligned. So all of it was not working. So something had to change. And I, I, I just let myself believe in what other people saw in me and went for it. Yeah. Such gold. So much. We can unpack all of that for a week. So much gold there. And you're setting up the, the real reason I wanted to talk to you because I don't know. I don't know that you're aware that this is like a superpower of yours, but you really, you really have this capacity to hold the vision. Like you hold that vision like a mofo. Like you just like, Mm -hmm. and and not just for others, but for yourself too. Because, I mean, and and I know this little part of your story. You jumped in, but it took a while. It it a took very it, it took like almost two time. years of you to really see the return on the investment of mm-hmm. the time that you were putting in and the effort and it was like a while before there was momentum really right and a lot of evidence that it wasn't <clears throat> working huh 
And a lot of people in my life telling me it wasn't working. Okay. And when are you going to go back to a J-O-B? Uh-huh. And when are you going to figure this out? And when, yeah, a I'm, lot of people putting, projecting their fears and their insecurities on me at the time. I'm sure a lot of listeners are just going, mm-hmm, yes, that. <laughs> yeah, that. So. That. And that's so, why your vision is so important. You can't, you'll, you won't get out of it if you yeah. don't have the vision. So how is it like an unconscious competition? First of all, do you know that that's a superpower of yours? Or is it like um, blind to you? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and here's why I say that, Gary. Yes, because I hold this vision for others and I see what it does. Mm -hmm. I, I see the evidence that when you hold that space for somebody of, it, it could be something as simple as a, a title rank promotion, or it could be a very simple thing. But when, when I hold that space, it, it happens, it, it, it happens, but I doubt my own vision a lot because it's so big. Mm -hmm. So that, and it's scary. It's just scary. And it paralyzes me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure there are a lot of listeners that, that can relate to that too. Like, oh, how dare I dream this big? Or how mm -hmm. dare I think that this is possible for me? Or, oh my gosh, that's one in a million that can have that happen. But I still believe, I still, even through all of it, believe. So yes, I, 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 I think I know that it's a superpower, but sometimes I don't lean into it the way that I should. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you get back in the game? Or like when, when you have those moments where you get paralyzed, like, how do you get back in the game after, after that or during that? So for me, it, the answer is always what I need more of, I have to give, right? So if I need more recognition, because a lot of times it's just like, I'm not getting the recognition yeah. or I'm not yeah. getting the accomplishment or I'm not checking the box or something that I thought was going to happen by now hasn't, right? So, or I'm feeling not significant or I'm feeling, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, mm -hmm. there's always some like core wound that, that will typically like perk its ugly head yeah. and trigger me. And what I've learned is that what I need, I must give. So, so if good. I'm looking it's, it, and it's, I'm telling you guys, it's, I, 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 like I'm feeling my body like fill up with emotion about that because it really is a universal law almost. I mean, I don't know if it really is technically, but uh, it, 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 it's just, I know it to true. be true. <laughs> I know it to be true. If we need more love, give love. If, if you, if you need recognition, give recognition. If you're looking for a pat on the back, because listen, entrepreneurship is really lonely. Yeah. It's really, really, really lonely. Yeah. So if you, if you need a friend, call a friend. So whatever I need to get me back on track, I absolutely give. And, and I, I give at, at a, <laughs> an abundance and it comes back to me. Yeah. And I start to realize who I am again and what I'm capable of. And we are all limitless human beings. And being an entrepreneur has really taught me that, that if you see it, you are the creator of your life. And if you see it, it is meant for you. Nothing is placed on our heart that's not meant for us. Mm -hmm. And we might have to wait longer than we'd like, but it's, there's not a soul in the world that can take it away from you except yourself. Yeah. You know, we can get our, in our own way energetically and, and just, you know, mentally. So always check your energy too. I mean, I think that that's another superpower that I have. I mm -hmm. really make sure I surround myself by really positive energy, good energy that, that, that is supportive and, and our dreamers and our doers, because the energy around you, gosh, it's 100%. subconsciously will take you out of the game. You don't yeah. even know it's happening. Yeah. I love that. You, so much gold there. So for, I want to go back to the, you said something that at the beginning really would had you propel forward was you just created a vision. You, there was a vision and that sort of like really set the motion and, and, and yes, there was some part of it that was just like this natural calling momentum and you just allowed it to be answered, which is not casual, by the way, because I'm going to assert that many of you listening have callings that are going unanswered. So just mm -hmm. having the courage to even answer the calling and allow 
for the allowing to happen, mm-hmm. it, it, it takes something. Yes. What, what advice do you have for people to form that vision, to do that work of, of holding that in place? And, and, and we should also, we should also, I also want to just create a little context. I mean, I shared this at the introduction, but you know, you coach hundreds of people. As mm-hmm. part of your your business is you you really in the game of showing other women how to grow their skincare and cosmetics business, right? You mm-hmm. coach them on sales, you coach them on, on leadership mindset, you coach them on building their teams, you coach them on on coaching other yeah. people. So you're you're really in 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 this game of working with hundreds of women, and you've been doing this for a long time. So I mean, yeah, you the impact that that you've had is huge, right? I mean. Your yeah. team is thousands of women large. What so so I wanted to say that because a thing or two about this. <laughs> so how do you if you're if somebody's listening and going, okay, how do I get started? I, I have to form a vision for myself. What what steps do you what advice do you have for them? For me, it it was journaling and writing. I call it mm-hmm. my life book. I literally call it my life book. And there's like the key areas of our life, right, Gary? Like our personal life, our professional life, our health, our life with our children, right? What kind of parent do we want to be? These are like the questions that I asked myself really early on, like magic wand moment, right? Like if I could have a magic wand, what would I want my relationship to look like? Yeah. What would I want my work life to look like? What would I want my relationship with my children to look like? My health my lifestyle. What do I want that to look like? And I got really, really deep in detail because the key to a vision, listen, we can all have a vision. We can all have a dream, but you've really got to embody it as if it's already done. Like I already have all these things. In my mind, in those first two years of having all the evidence in the world that this idea was not going to work, having all the evidence in the world that I'm about to go bankrupt, right? That I'm about to put my house into foreclosure. I mean, I I was, it was serious. It was serious. I had about, I had six figures of credit card debt. I mean, it it was not walk in the park. I didn't have a safety net and I definitely didn't have a nest egg. So that in and of itself, like the vision has to be as if I already have a team of tens of thousands. I already have the paycheck. I hope to, to have, right. It's already in the bank and you start to show up like that. Like money is energy guys. It's energy. Mm -hmm. You're either attracting it or you're repelling it. There's abundance of it out there. There's enough for everything, everyone to go around. So even though I had six figures of credit card debt and on, and I mean this with all sincerity and truth, my house was either going to go into foreclosure. I was going to claim bankruptcy, or I was going to have to take a very large loan from a family member. Those were my three choices that I was faced with at this time, at this particular time. In all sincerity, I still believed that everything I see in my vision is already with me, Mm -hmm. right? I already have what I need. I'm already, I just, my job is to trust and keep walking towards it. Mm -hmm. That, that is writing that down though. It starts with the vision. It starts with what do I, if I could do anything in the world, what? brings me joy. Close your eyes and say, what brings me joy? What do I love doing? What do I, because that is linked to your purpose, mm-hmm. right? For me, I'm such a people person as, and for me, when I started this whole process of creating this vision, that this company was going to be a platform for me to build. I asked myself that question. I said, what, what do I want to do if I could do anything? And it, it, the answer was so clear and it will come to you guys. If you get quiet with yourself, it will come to you. And it was, I want to impact women to know that they are limitless. Like those words really popped in my head. I want to impact women to know that they are limitless. How I was going to do that. I have no idea. I literally was just asked to sell some awesome skincare and makeup. I had no idea how that was ever going to like come to fruition. Right. But I set that as my intention that I woke up with every day. It was bigger than selling a lip gloss. It was bigger than, I just knew if I keep building this, they will come. How I was going to get anyone to want to do what I do. 
no clue how I was going to get anyone to want to join me and do what I do. (laughs) Definitely no clue. The evidence was all there 16 months before I ever got anyone to say yes to wanting to do what I do. But I was walking around and living and breathing my vision. It was in me. It was in my core. And what happens when you do that, and you will know when you're at a place where your vision is something that is like really in your core and you're embodying it because you do become a magnet. Mm. You do energetically start to become a magnet. And people are like, what is she up to? I don't know what game she's playing. I don't care. I want to be a part of it. Because what I learned is that a lot of the world, and I'm just going to assert this, is walking around lacking joy. Happiness and joy, two very different things. We can be happy in any given moment, and that's a fleeting emotion. Joy is something that we actually are living and feeling Mm -hmm. and breathing. And that comes for me from gratitude, right? Just like having that sense of gratitude every day just brings me so much joy. And that is an energy that becomes magnetic. People just want to be a part of that and they don't even know. And you just have to trust me. They're like, you'll walk into Starbucks and heads will turn and they'll be like, who, who is that? What, what is she up to? And then it just came, became after writing it all down, like, what do I want my relationship to be like? What do I want my professional life to be like? What do I want my health to look like? My, my, my bank account to look like all of those things that are like key areas of our life. I started to share it with people because this is another thing Mm. about our vision. Like, don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell people the game you're playing. Tell people what you're up to. Tell people what you're up to. I've got this idea. I'm super excited about it. Now, I'm not saying like some of you might have ideas that you want to keep to yourself. (laughs) Sometimes, Sometimes we don't want to share our idea, but we can share like why we are going to do what we're about to do, right? Why? Why are you doing that? Why do you want to go join that company? What do you what do you see about that? What do you see about that when you do it? And I'm telling you, Gary, you just watch the people just show up. It's almost as if once the toughest part about any any of your listeners right now that that have a dream, that have a vision, that 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 have an idea. You almost don't have to do much once you decide to do it Mm. because it happens. It it comes to you. It happens. When you take control of your life, when you say, I want to impact people and now's the time and my idea or my dream or my what is going to do that, it's almost as if you don't have to do anything. It just happens. But what you will have to do is most likely be patient. And I think that's the toughest thing because it's not most likely going to happen in the time that you hope or you wish or you want, but it will. Yeah, It absolutely will. And the consistency that you show up with every day will compound. And all of a sudden you're going to look up and you're going to say, how the heck did this happen? And now my vision's bigger, right? It it just, it just keeps getting bigger because now there's more, oh, what else is possible? And, and, and that, I live in that endless possibility. And that's so good because I think that that's one of the things. I mean, I want to get into this topic, but I want to set it up by saying that one of the that's one of the things that I think takes people out of the game the quickest. That there is some expectation about how you thought it was going to go down, mm-hmm. whether the speed, the ease, the 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 amount, and that doesn't happen the way that it it was going to, you like predicted. And so now you get more concerned with the fact that it didn't happen the way that you thought it was going to happen instead of solving that problem and learning or, from or learning from it or holding the vision. Yeah. You now start to deal with, oh, it didn't, oh, it didn't, oh, it didn't work. It's not going to happen. It's not going to. And you start to tailspin and take yourself out of the game. So when you are in anticipating that there's going to be ups and downs, anticipating that it's not going to happen the way that we predicted. I mean, you shared, it took you two years. You made this leap. First of all, you made this leap in a new company that had no track record. I mean, you were literally the first consultant. You were first distributor that signed up. So 
We were told it, it, it was the worst idea ever. I mean, in a, in a business where <laughs> it's all about social proof, right? Like you see somebody yeah. accomplishing a result and you go, oh, I want that. Like you had none of that. No. And you also jumped in. in an industry that is billions and billions of dollars and, and most, I mean, arguably one of the most competitive industries to not just break into, but to get any sort of market share in, uh-huh. right? <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah. Yeah. So how do you, what, so I got how you create the vision. What advice do you have to hold that vision in place when the stuff, when it gets rough, right? When you have those failures or gift moments, really, because it's, it's such a gift moment that that's, that's, that's what I was just going to say. It's such a gift moment. It's happening for you and not to you. And you really have to look at that. And Historically, if I look back on the 10 years that I've been with my company, every time we felt like the world was falling <laughs> or, oh my God. And, and trust me, there's been some doozies. There's yeah. been things that in a normal world probably should have closed the doors, right? They it Really, I mean, it probably should have closed the doors. It, it, it is what absolutely propelled us to the next level. Because we learned something. And now, and and because we learned something, it made us do something better that we might not have even thought about, right? That that got us to where we needed to go. And it wouldn't have worked if we didn't have that struggle almost. Mm -hmm. So I got to a place where I almost was welcoming the struggles. Mm. Because that became such a key part of our story. And, and everybody loves a story, Gary. I mean, that's so good. You have to create the story. Listen, if, if I joined my company, hundreds of people joined me the next day. Do you think I'd be the leader I am today? Do you, do you think I'd be half the person I am today? I'd probably be a heck more arrogant actually. Right. Like I'd probably be like, Oh, look at how awesome I am. I just got hundreds of people on day two. It's not what creates a remarkable life. And if you look at any remarkable life in history, I know sometimes we only see the high highlight reel, right? And we don't see the struggles. Mm-hmm. Any remarkable person in this world absolutely had the struggles and, and had, but stayed consistent and that consistency compounded and it taught them what they needed to know, which grew them into the person they needed to be in order for the vision to become a reality. And, and that's a really important distinction for your viewers to understand. The vision that I now have, I am not the person yet to have that come true. Does that make sense to you? It makes so much sense. And, and, it's, and it's, let's break that down a little bit because I think people often don't get that, right? So you, you have this vision, you declare this vision, and immediately what you get confronted with is the space between you and, and vision. that vision. Right. Yeah. There's there's a gap there and 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 who you need to be, you haven't even yet discovered. You haven't yet discovered. You have it's like I can't teach you how to ride a bike. You can read all the books, I can coach you. I can mm-hmm. I always I always talk to my clients about this when when I'm teaching them sales because people want to go read all the books and they wanna learn all the things. And I'm like, okay, but you gotta get in there. You got to get in there. You got to mess some conversations up. You got to get some no's. You got to have some breakdowns. And from there, we'll have stuff to work with. Right? You got to scrape your knees. Yeah. A couple bruises. Yeah. And and you can't resist that. No. Like, that is part of it. Like, you you just called that. And some would even say, apparently, how spiritual you want to get. Some would even say that you called that in in order to have that transformation. That's right. And guess what? It's going to be very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. And probably messy. <laughs> yeah. And there's going to be a lot of boxes of snotty tissues and, you know, and all the things. But I would never trade any of those moments mm-hmm. because yeah. that's not just taught me things, but that taught me how strong I can be yeah. and how courageous I can be. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, oh God, it, it's like the greatest gift. You know, um, and most definitely the thing I'm most proud of, you know, 
so much more than any title or paycheck or or whatever. I'm just I'm really proud of the person that I keep becoming mm. because I have the capability and the will to have a vision yeah. and and to really hold that vision for myself and for others to to bring along the way. It's so good. So good cuz a lot I think a lot of us when we're going through that moment, we resist the crap out of it. Like it's yeah, not do. like you're probably like, oh, why does it have to be hard? Why is this happening to me? Why do I keep? But afterwards, when you look back, it's like I would not have done that any differently. No, I would not have done it in, in all differently. No. Nope. So no. Nope. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. What else should we talk about before we wrap this up? It's I been know such a good it's conversation. so good. It's so good. There's so many like. I, my God, I'm like, I feel so channeled right now. It's crazy. Like, I feel like this is just so good. So good. Yeah, I know. The stuff all, that's coming out of yeah. your mouth is just like brilliant it's, right now. <laughs> and it's so my, it's so my truth. It really, yeah. really is. And sometimes as entrepreneurs, we forget like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it did take yeah. me two years to, because you'd wait forever is my point. Like I would wait forever for my vision to come true. Like I would, there was no option of giving up. There was mm-hmm. no option of giving in. And listen, I have such big visions. I have such big goals that it's just, it's so stinking clear, but I, I still get scared. I still get like, nah, maybe not. Like maybe I should type this email and send this email. Cause I've got this idea. Nah, I don't, I don't want to, yeah. people are busy or cause, and it's, it's just that it's that it's that not necessarily a negative self-talk, but it's also like, again, a little of that people pleasing that comes out in me that I'm still trying to work on that. Yeah. Mm, I don't want to ruffle. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to, you know, put more work on their plate or they're really busy. I don't want to bother them right now. I, I make, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, <laughs> I, I put onto somebody else the way that they're going to receive my idea, my thought, my, and I wish that's the next level of what I'm trying to work on is just Mm -hmm. when I get that inspirational, I call it like a, it's not necessarily a God wink, but it's like that inspirational idea or whatever. I'm trying really hard to just act on it, just Mm -hmm. act on it. How it's received is really none of my business, but act on it. Because again, when, when we take actions, sometimes our visions turn out to be even better than we ever thought. Right. And that also might take a turn. It might not actually come in the form of what you thought it was going to look like, but it's even better if that makes sense. Yeah. So sometimes, and and that's why like no's can be really great because maybe that was not meant for you. Maybe there's a better thing that's going to be a yes down the road. So again, just like not taking it personally. Right. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like get your ideas out there get it in somebody's ear and just release the result. Like just be responsible for the action and release the result. And that's something I'm trying to really work on right now. It's just taking action on those little inspirational things that come in our heads and an idea. I'm like, oh, that's a stupid idea. You talk yourself out of an idea. I mean, I think what you're really pointing to is that this, this idea that you're never really done working on yourself and that you you still take yourself wherever you go. And, and I think that it's a really important idea to highlight because, or distinction to point to, because I feel most of us are wired to arrive at the mountaintop and, and think that you're somehow done. Like I made it. I mean, we were sort of, we were talking about this mm-hmm. earlier in the business because in your business, there's a, there's like a monthly cycle, right? You, you, everybody yes. has their monthly sales goals and their monthly and then they work and then the month ends and they start out, they started all over again. So it can create this idea yeah. of, of having to, that you arrive and that you're done. And it's like, it's not really like that. You, you, even you with your level of mastery, with the incredible results that you have produced, I mean, you, you are one of the top performing people in this industry internationally. Like the results that you have created are remarkable. Yeah. And here you are still dealing with your humanity. Yes. Right. Still dealing with your stuff 
not letting it stop you, taking it with you and acknowledging it and going, okay, I'm going to do this. It's scary to send this email, but I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to do that anyway. And acknowledging that it's a, it's a life journey. Like I always like to say, when you climb one step, you find yourself at the bottom of the next one. Yeah. You're never in a place where you're done transforming, done growing. And that's the gift, right? Like at the end of the day, that's the real gift. But we are always chasing this dream of like, oh, I got to the mountaintop and I'm done. I'm, I'm fully like, no, no, no. You got to that mountaintop. <laughs> Yeah. What's, What's next? The next one? <laughs> What's next? It, it starts to get a little exciting. And, and here's, here's the other thing that I think might be really valuable for your listeners is that as you start to gain success and, and, when, and things start happening for you, there's going to be a lot of criticism that you come up against, right? There's going to be people that might feel a way about what's happening. There might be something that you do on social media or put out on social media that is off-putting or I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I had to unfollow you. Mm -hmm. And these are like good friends of mine, Gary. And, and that hurts. That stings really, really bad. And so there's, there's two things that, that I always do because when, when you're up against criticism, especially from people that you love and that you respect and that you admire, right? Cause that happens too. There might be those moments where you really have to look at it and say, okay, is there t truth to this? Like, is there something that I need to look at and learn and maybe I can do better, right? Or is this like not my stuff to keep, not my, not my thing to, to hold on to? Because the biggest thing that I had to learn was to stay out of other people's stories because mm -hmm. people will project on you their insecurities, their worries. And it's not because they want to dim your light or take you out of the game. It's mostly because like they love you and they want, they don't want to see you fail. So they're trying to probably protect you in that process, but you have to remember that's the lens that they're looking through and your vision needs to be bigger than that, right? Your vision, you need to say to them, I love you. I thank you for caring for me and worrying about me, but I got this. Because it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a tough part when, when I've, I've definitely lost some people in my life through this journey. I've definitely had to let habits go and, and certainly things that were comfortable needed to change. But it's all been for me to elevate myself to a better version of myself. And that's also the, a beautiful thing of falling down and failing and screwing up is to say, okay, I'm not perfect. I learned. Thank you. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be better. I mean, social media is so hard. It's just not <laughs> easy. And and now as as a as an entrepreneur and as somebody who is at the top of her game in her industry, it's like you get looked at under a really fine microscope, you know? Mm -hmm. Which is not not fun, for sure. Not pleasant, yeah. It's not pleasant, but again, as long as you're doing it from a place of love and service and and it's really true to you, you really have to just kind of keep keep to that vision and just thank them for their care and concern. And you can unfollow me. That's fine. <laughs> you can unfollow me because sometimes who you're meant to serve is not the people closest in your life, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe what you're doing is not going to serve them, but it is serving potentially hundreds and thousands of other people that are saying thank you for sharing that or thank you for that post or thank you for those words. So just always keeping that in your mind of like, who am I meant to serve? And it's okay if somebody doesn't agree with what you're doing. Yeah. Well, my friend, this has been a lovely conversation. Thank you so much. I love for... talking to you. It was so great. And please definitely come back and let's let's be a guest on the show again. I have so many it. things that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> I know. We we could talk so many things, Gary. My so God, many we, topics. Right? There's a lot of topics here, but I thank you so much for having me. This has been, you've really started my day off. So amazing. I'm going to continue to go out there and spread more love and light because of having this time with you. So thank you for your energy coming at me today because I'm going to have a killer Wednesday thanks to you. I mean, you probably would have had a killer Wednesday because you're Mary Kay. 
but I'll, I'll, I'll thank you. I, I'll take the acknowledgement. <laughs> receive that. That's another tip. I receive. will. When yes. somebody something and you receive it and believe them. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mary Kay. Let so me... much love. I can spend a week unpacking the lessons from Mary Kay's journey, but let's dive into a few key ones. First is the importance of having the right mindset. More specifically, a growth mindset, which includes being open to possibilities and being open to being wrong about yourself. When Mary Kay first launched her business, she was terrified and didn't believe that she had the skills necessary to be successful. But she remained open and curious and got to work. For a year and a half, she struggled with absolutely no success. But with each failure, she tapped into her faith and she kept at it, showing up every day and choosing to look at each failure as a gift with a lesson to teach her. My biggest takeaway from Mary Kay is that believing in yourself isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It can be gritty and sometimes you have to dig deep and find it. It's a discipline that you develop like anything else. But once you do, it unlocks a magical world of creation where anything is possible, and where miracles can happen every day. And I don't know about you, but that's the world that I want to be a part of. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Ownership Game with your host, Gary Montalvo. Make sure to like and comment on your favorite podcast platform, as well as subscribe so that you never miss an episode. 